Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Waves of Hope. We're so glad that you're with us. We always, it's always a pleasure and a blessing and giving us the opportunity to share with you. And this morning we'll have Wendy sing, and Josh has a wonderful message for us. And it's getting, it is exciting around here, and we've got Carnival getting off the ship, and uh, hopefully. The rest will follow soon because I know there's several that are waiting to get off when they come on board. So, but uh, we hope that happens soon. We pray that everyone is doing well, and uh, I know there are some that are still waiting and to be called back. And I hope that happens soon. We pray for that and pray for you that you're still hanging in there and doing well and staying strong, keeping the faith, and as uh, messaging with one and we just like to say in Myanmar it's things are still not well they're not as bad but uh, we just need to pray for that country and for the countries that don't have freedom like we do because we are so blessed with and so grateful and but we need to be thankful and we need to pray for those that don't have what we have and just to share and do what we can and just pray that God blesses them as well as we do, but uh, whether it's in good day or in bad day, it's always, God is always with us, and we just need to stay strong and be positive and never give up. We know our love and prayers are always with you, and we're always here for you, whether you're able to come to the ministry or what. Please let us, anything that you need, just a, a word of encouragement, or you just want to tell us we're all right, we love to hear from you at www.ctm.live. Let us know. It, it's always good to hear from the seafarers and from all of you. And you're a blessing. This ministry is a blessing. And most important, you're blessing us because of our, our audience. And we're so grateful. So before Wendy sings, let's have a word of prayer and we'll have Wendy. Josh will inspire you and just God's blessing. Father, we thank you so much. We just pray that you bless our seafarer family and whether they're on ships or still at home, just bless them with encouragement and with strength to keep going, to not give up, to know that in your timing, we, we might not always understand your, your timing, but we know it is best. And it's going to work out. We just pray that you bless them and those that are waiting are called back and able to help support their family and just be encouraged. And we we pray that the other ships, that those that aren't able to get off, that soon they are able to get off and come back to their home away from home, like the, at the ministries that we may share with them and just encourage them having them back. We pray for their safety and safe sails and for their health very well, and just that COVID continues to disappear and just totally goes away, and health, everyone is just stays healthy, and we are able to keep going since we have not, not been busy for three years, but it's so good to get busy again and sharing your word. We are so blessed. We are so grateful, and Lord, we thank you, Fred. Bless Josh with words that you want him to share and just for the inspiring to keep everyone strong. Our hearts are open to you always. In your most loving and merciful name we pray. Amen. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. 
for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him so open up the gates make way before the king of kings our god who comes to save is here to set the captives free for who can stop the lord almighty our god is a lion the lion of judah he's warring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before him for who can stop the lord almighty who can stop the lord almighty who can stop the lord almighty who can stop the lord our god is the lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him all right good morning everybody or good evening whenever you're watching this um <clears throat> i was not really expecting to go today um but i uh messed up the schedule so here i am and um i say that just because i want you to know um that um sometimes you get a passage or like sometimes when we open up the bible god's word is um it's just perfect for what you're going through and um today we're gonna look at really a testimony of, of this psalmist um and in church and in christian life a lot of times you hear people talk about oh you know what what's your testimony um what man that guy's testimony was so good um wow i don't know you know those kind of things and we start looking at that but my question is you know what what really is a testimony what is what does it mean to to have a testimony and you know i think essentially what it boils down to is this that my life was like this god entered my life I put my hope and trust in him because I, I knew I was dead in my sin and that I could only have life through Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And my testimony is, man, how has my life changed? And so when you hear a testimony and it sounds like, man, I'm just glorifying my old self, that's not a very good testimony because it's not telling about how God has changed your life. What difference God has made in your life and those kind of things. And so this morning, as we think about the word testimony, we're going to see a testimony of answered prayer. And we're going to kind of walk through this passage, and, and I want us to look at it kind of like an investigative journalist, you know, ask the who, what, when, why questions, you know, um, those questions that make you write a good essay. Um, I want us to ask those questions as we kind of walk through this psalm are this section of Psalm 119, and we're in the cough section, section. So that's 145 through 152. That's kind of where we're at. We're nearing the end um, of this psalm. 
and our deep, deep, deep dive into it. But let's read it, and then we're going to kind of just walk our way verse by verse back through it. So this is what the word of the Lord says. It says, I will pray with all my heart. Answer me, Lord, and I will obey your decrees. I cry out to you, rescue me, that I may obey your laws. I rise early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your word. I stay awake through the night thinking of your promise. In your faithful love, O Lord, hear my cry. Let me be revived by following your regulations. Lawless people are coming to attack me. They live far from your instructions. But you are near, O Lord, and all your commands are true. I have known from my earliest days that your laws will last forever. That's a lot of I in there, right? And sometimes I think in, in testimonies, people can say, well, that, that guy, he kind of sounds conceited. But the testimony is about what God has done to us. It's, it's, it's kind of like a humble brag, you know? It's not saying, I've done any of this. It's all based on God's power. God's power to save. God's power of his mercy. God's power of his justice, you know, all of those qualities of God, it's all about God. That's why it's a testimony. It's not about us fully, I guess I should say. So let's kind of walk through this. Let's look at, go back to verse 145. I said it's, this is a testimony to answer prayer. Well, you got to start by, well, how did he pray? I pray with all of my heart. Answer me, Lord. I will obey your decrees. You know, I pray with all of my heart. The word in Greek right there, um, it's there's there's actually three different words for all. And then there's I can't remember the first one, but it's something, pos, and then pan. And it's all they all change on the last letter, but that one's pan. And it's like the all encompassing all. Like every single bit of my heart, every strand of muscle, every beat of blood that's in my body that 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 it's pumping out, God let it let I pray that with that's how I pray with you with all my strength. I pray to you. That's how I'm gonna pray. So please answer. And then what did he pray for? Verse 146. Save me and I will keep your testimonies. Now that's not a that's not a um like if you do this I'll do this like a bargain here he's saying save me in order that I may you know that I will do this I want to do this this is my desire I'm praying to you with all my heart because I want to follow your statutes then verse 147 when did he pray I rise early before the sun is even up and I cry out for help. Before the dawn in the morning. And then how long did he pray? What's the next verse? 148. And I stay awake through the night thinking about your promise. What does Jesus say in the New Testament? Pray without ceasing, right? You know, it's a lifestyle of prayer. It's a lifestyle of depending on God. And not that you're just constantly walking around like here, you know, with your eyes closed or um, something like that, but it's an attitude of the heart to say, God, I'm going to depend on you through everything today. And this is how we pray. And that's how we live a life of prayer. But this is the neat part. And this is, this is the thing that I love right here. It's, it's the grounds of the request. You know, why? According to your loving kindness, according to your justice. Verse 149. The way um, I read it in the New Living Translation, it says, Your faithful love. But there's just something, you know, and I was reading something before this chapel about all the words in it and a commentary, and it um, was by Charles Spurgeon. And he's sitting there and he's talking about the word loving kindness. 
And he said, when you look at this word, it's sweet. There's not, there's not a sweeter word in English than loving kindness because kindness is implied in love, right? But he said, you know, it's, it's like the cream that, that, that rises to the top of, of milk, you know, or, or like worked butter. It's kind of like that cream that comes to the top that that's the loving kindness. It's, it's the sweetest part of kindness is God's love. And he's saying, this is your faithful love, Lord. And I'm praying according to that, you know, and according to your justice. And you just hear the faith of the psalmist as he's making this prayer, as he's bringing it to God. He's not saying, God, I need this. You need the duty. He's saying, Lord, because of your mercy, because of your grace, because of your love, your justice, do this because of your character, because you are God. And I know that you care. But next, you know, let's look at 150. How does God answer his prayer? Lawless people are coming to attack me. They live far from your instruction. But you are near, right? You are near. That's 151. I'm sorry I said the wrong <laughs> the wrong verse. Um, but 151. But you are near, O Lord, and all your commands are true. God answered his prayer. And then the testimony, what it all comes up to, you know, like that, that point. What is his testimony? I have known from my earliest days that your laws will last forever. Your testimony, you founded them forever. God, you have done this and you will continue to do it. And I must continue to walk in your ways. And so that's my, I think that, you know, as we look at that, I think we can say, you know, Lord, how, how do we need to pray? What is it that we're praying? When do we pray? Is it is it an attitude of my whole life? You know, am I am, am I being persistent in my prayer? Because sometimes that's how it is, you know. And and I think it's um, Luke. I'm gonna misplace this, so I'm not gonna try to give the reference. But when Jesus talks about the persistence of prayer, he 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 gives a parable about an old woman that is just a nagging old lady to a to a unbelieving judge and eventually that judge does it and he says you know if if this unbelieving judge would grant this old nagging lady her her wish wouldn't a loving god do that all the more and so we need to be persistent in our prayer but then how what is the grounds of our prayer are we just praying like you know god it'd be nice to have a ferrari no, that's 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 just you know like a pure desire. But are we saying, God, according to your word, Lord, I pray, I want my desires to line up with your will, Lord. I feel you know like that's that's on the grounds of. Does our grounds line up with His will? And then you know, are we looking back? Are we meditating on it, God? Are are how are you working this out? Are you calling me to act in this way? But then when God answers our prayer, we share in that. Because what an encouragement. What an encouragement to be able to look at somebody and say, I've got good news for you. This is how God has worked in my life. And, you know, sometimes we'll look at how God answered a prayer, and it won't be what we wanted. Or we'll look at a situation and we'll say, God, I really wish I didn't have to walk through that. But now that I've got some time to separate, I can see, you know, even though that may not be what I wanted, it may not be what I feel like was even the best in that situation, I can see the good that you've brought from it. And that's a promise, I think, that we can rest in, and it's Romans 8, 28, is that God works all things out for the good of those that love him. And that's what I want to end with. That's my word of encouragement this morning. It's for the good of those that love him. You know, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect, that everything's going to be rosy, that you know, you're never going to have trials, but 
what it does mean is that even in those trials, God will bring goodness out of it. And I know that's true for my life. My worst moments, I have learned how to trust God more. In the biggest points of pain, God has just held my heart closer than I've ever felt in my whole life. I've never felt so much love when I've been abandoned by others. And so I encourage you with that. I challenge you with that this morning that pray for a testimony. So thank you for joining us. I hope that this has encouraged you. I hope that um, as we've walked through this psalm, Psalm 119, as we've kind of done this deep dive, you know, you kind of see it and you kind of see the same pattern through a lot of it. But as we see the same pattern, isn't that just a testimony of God's goodness? That no matter what, when we come to this, we see this guy that is in love with God's word because that's what Psalm 119 is all about. And his testimony constantly comes back to this. But God, your laws will last forever. What an encouragement. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for being a part of Canaveral Port Ministry, whether you know, you're know you a seafarer that comes in, whether you're a, a friend of the ministry, a supporter of the ministry. Um, maybe you, you just or checking us out for the first time. Thank you for joining us. And I pray that um, you will have a wonderful day. So um, we'll see you again tomorrow for another Wave of Hope.